Hey everybody, uh, welcome to today's video in which we're going to take a closer look at some of the changes from the V-Ray 6 and namely the changes to the V-Ray dome light and how we can more or less use this thing in a practical way. So to better explain what these changes are, we're going to take a couple of uh, assets here. We can You can use any assets that you want. For me, I'm just going to go over to the Cosmos browser, and from here, we're just going to take some of the vehicles that are readily available. Feel free and take any of these that you want. I just went down and uh, looked through some of them, and I just went with the one that I actually liked the most, which was the Mustang. Now, we're going to put it in, inside our scene. And we get this thing. I'm going to move it down to the zero, zero point. And now I can use this thing as a model for our showcasing here. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to go in and just create one V-Ray dome light in here. And leave it like this. And open up our uh, IPR so we can actually see what we are rendering. Let's go ahead and start the interactive rendering. And as you can see right now, we just have this uh, asset in here being uh, rendered, but on a white background. Now, what we want to do to get a bit of, uh, more of a uh, difference in the reflections and the lighting, we want to use an HDRI image for this. So uh, to do that, we have an option to use any uh, HDR that we have, or we can just uh, choose one of the already existing ones in the Cosmos browser. So if we go back here to the start, we have a HDRI section, and here you can get a lot of these different HDRIs. But for this one, I'm actually gonna go to uh, an ex external um, website, Namely, going to go to polyhaven.com. This used to be uh, HDRI Haven. So if you're familiar with HDRI Haven, this is basically their new website. And the only thing being different right now is that over here they have HDRIs, they have textures and models, all for free. So in the HDRIs, depending on what kind of a model you're trying to render, you might want to choose um, the the corresponding HDRI for it. In our case, it's probably going to be uh, a, an outdoor. So let's see, uh, we have urban for a car. And we can see that as we just did this, we have a lot of different uh, HDRIs to choose from. You can just choose one that uh, works well for you. So by clicking here you can just download it and test it out so this is where you can get a bunch of different HDRIs now let's go back to max and in here what I'm gonna do is just uh, input a V-Ray bitmap it's going to ask you which uh, HDRI you want to use I have downloaded a couple of from the same site so let's go with the uh, first one that we saw here there we go and as soon as we do this, we get a background and uh, lighting for this thing. Now, just like this, it's okay. But now we are met with a problem. Namely, if I start zooming in or out, what you're going to notice is that more or less the HDRI always stays the same. If I rotate around it, for example, if I go in, I rotate around you're gonna see my car is floating and there is nothing to put it in, uh, in place and if we're gonna try to basically put this thing to fit with the HDRI which again not the best idea generally when you're doing this workflow what you want to do is you want to be using back plates for rendering but let's just say for this case you don't have the back plates well, now there is a choice where, uh, well, there is an option that can save you from this. Previously, what you would have to do is you would have to open up the material editor. You pull in your uh, HDRI in here. I make it an instance. And what you would have to do is just click on the ground projection. 
turn this thing on and now all of a sudden uh, your model is put uh, on the ground but the problem is with this one well the size is really not that easy to uh, compare and you would have to change the position in here so kind of hard to joust it and also the edges here on certain maps they they would pro uh, prove to be a problem so now there is a way that we can actually uh, work around with this thing and th this is where the new option for uh, V-Ray uh, Finite Dome comes into play namely we're going to turn off the ground projection so we can turn it back uh, like it used to be now what I want to do is I want to select my uh, dome light and I'm going to put it to zero 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 now, as you can see nothing changed but now the option is that when you click on the finite dome now this thing changes so once we increase the radius let's try 500 now what you can notice is that if i zoom in out a bit or zoom out a bit like this you can see that now it looks like the car is within a bubble and the lower part of the bubble is as you can see over here a bit curved now this curve is basically the ground blend. So if I put it to one, oh, well, I had a bit of a crash. So uh, as I was saying, if we increase the ground blending mode over here, you're gonna see that this thing is slowly turning into a sphere. So more or more, you're getting this spherical uh, look. Now, for this one, I'm actually going to go back to 0 0.2, leave it like this, and I'm going to increase the radius to, let's try something like 1500, and that is going to make it so this thing envelops more of the scene. Now, as you can see, when I'm moving around, I can see that this is the scale of my car alongside with the scale of the environment, but also I can see that I have this skew here. Now this skew can be fixed by playing around or modifying the projection height. Now think of this as what would the height for the camera be when this thing was taken. So at the moment it's put at 50 uh, centimeters. So if I put it 250 centimeters, what you can notice is that now we've actually lost that bit of uh, skew that we had over there. But again, if we take a look at around, it's starting to look much better and if i see something that i don't really like i can try to increase this thing maybe even get it to a bit higher there we go so 180 would be the height of this hdr was taken and now what i can do is i can look around and see how the edges are if i have any problems with the edges being uh, skewed i can play around with a ground blending uh, option over here but in this case even zero you don't really see this so for this hdri we don't have any problem if i put it to one now you can see that, that problem so 0 0.2 in this case works just fine so we can now go ahead and render this and have our car or our model be in the scene but you're gonna notice one thing. If we do it just like this, there is a small issue. Namely, uh, well, where is the shadow? We are supposed to see some sort of a shadow here. And well, it is not being picked up from anything. So there is a really quick uh, way of remedying this. So all you gotta do is just go over in the standard primitives, choose, uh, actually choose V-Ray. You put down a V-Ray plane anywhere in the scene. And once you put put it like this, uh, V-Ray plane is a plane that goes on for basically eternity. So it's a unlimited uh, plane, but we don't actually want to see this thing. Uh, we only want to keep this thing as a shadow catcher, because if you take a look at here, you can see that the plane continues on forward and it's clipping through the buildings and making this thing look weird. So the easiest way to get around this thing is while well, you have the V-Ray plane selected 
on the side you actually have a button that says make v-ray shadow catcher through the v-ray object properties by just clicking this button now what you've done is you've made this v-ray plane just act up as a uh, shadow catcher so anything put into the scene will have a shadow and it will make it look like it's part of this lighting scenario here and whenever i move it all the light coming up from the hdri will cast a perfect shadow here now i can also go in and for my map just play around with a horizontal rotation and that will basically give us a different look as you can see the shadow is interacting with however we light this thing up there we go so a very helpful uh, thing and easy to work with and the last thing I would actually uh, like to mention before we finish this video is that when you have your light selected what you can do here is uh, now if I move this thing around you're gonna see that my ground moves with it because now it's tethered to the actual uh, light if I scale it upwards or downwards you're gonna see that my scale for this thing uh, changes so this means that even if you want to do some smaller changes like smaller um, modifications to what kind of uh, light or what kind of uh, background you're gonna see here you can just go ahead and uh, do it th this way if you can uh, see when i'm trying to rotate this thing it doesn't uh, actually rotate i would have to go in and uh, lock texture to icon and now when i'm rotating this thing now it's rotating so as you can see uh, you have a really simple way of changing the look of your uh, HDRI and if you want to see how big this thing is you can see it uh, by just zooming uh, or um, yeah zooming out and then you can increase the scale or decrease it and it's all going to be tied down to what kind of a HDRI you're using for uh, your rendering so more or less this would be it for uh this option for the finite dome for the very dome light and i hope you guys had fun and you managed to learn something new from this video if you'd like to support me then click on the join button in the direct links will be in the description below there is also a thanks button under every video in the channel now so you can use that as well and the most helpful thing you can do is always just click the like and the subscribe buttons and leave a comment below in the video. So, as always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you all in the next videos. Bye-bye.